join us for the webinar today, please ask any questions right here under this picture. So it's also the pinned post and they've also highlighted it. So get started here. Let's get started. All right. So what is Hayo? Really quickly, again, we're not selling anything here today. We're simply giving you good content. If you choose that you want to be able to learn more about our product, feel free to reach out to us directly. But we're just here to provide you with some really great content that you can take away and really some action items right away. Um, Hayo's goal is we help your business grow. We do so by allowing you to build without any code, custom Facebook apps, mobile apps, and website landing pages. So the four items though that I really want to go over is the overview of the state of the web and where we're at today from a digital marketing perspective, the importance of custom Facebook applications, how to drive more likes on your Facebook page, how to build a mobile app in just seconds. All right. So let's start with an overview of the state of the web and social. Where are we right now? Right? What is the state of the internet? Let's just let's just kind of back up and talk about where marketing has gone. The, the traditional way of marketing has been newspaper ads. It was sending direct mail, maybe having things on someone's uh, doorknob, maybe some cold calling. Very difficult to measure, right? What we've done now on the internet is that marketing, marketing has actually become a hard science. And the power of that is that you see these are just connections on what's called the social graph. I'm not going to get too technical, but there's a term called social network analysis which actually says that we really are 60 degrees of separation apart from any single person. So the ability to send something and make it be viral is very, very easy to compare to where it was, say, seven, eight years ago. Just think about where MySpace was as a company and how long it took them to grow, and then compare that with Instagram and how quickly that grew after it hit a point on this social graph here where enough people knew about it through other connections and they got interested and then they wanted to know about it. So it just shows you the power and the state of the internet and it's only exponentially growing in terms of how people's connections are going to be quantified. Just kind of gives you kind of a background before we really dive deep into the different products and services out there. So just to kind of give you some statistics about Facebook. So some of you obviously know about Facebook. You're obviously here on this webinar. 600 million people are logging into Facebook every single day. That is unbelievably powerful. Yeah, I would have um, never I would have never guessed that. <laughs> is, I mean, it's you know, there's over a billion people that the numbers are growing especially in the in the uh, generations above 40 years of age. Um, and, and to make it even more interesting is about 700 billion minutes are spent on Facebook each month. Um, so people not only are just logging in, they're logging in for long periods of time. Man. And and what makes it really really fun here from a Facebook perspective is that um, it you know, Facebook allows you to kind of reach people where they are, um, where they're already going and already comfortable. But wow, just just take that number in. 600 million people log in every single day and look at connections and look at their, what their friends are doing. And, and it's just a very powerful statistic. So next I want to talk about some mobile marketing. Um, Facebook really, really, really is investing a lot in mobile. Um, their annualized expected revenue from mobile advertising just this year is over a billion dollars for Facebook. And some statistics here, in less than 14 months, more people will be at act, be, will access the web through mobile devices than all of desktop PCs combined. And more than a third of all daily Facebook log, logins happen on mobile. You know, Facebook just invested a ton, a ton of money into Facebook Home to try to ensure that your experience on your mobile device on Android is actually through Facebook primarily. Um, the goal of this is not only to give you an experience where you can share photos and, and connect with friends, but it's also to make sure that when they have advertising dollars that they're in front of you. And that's why Facebook does so much. They're investing so much right now on a mobile advertising platform so that you can really get tailored advertising relative to what you like on Facebook and your experiences on Facebook. Basically, mobile is here and it's here to stay for sure, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And um, Tim, this is something that, that we'll get into a lot more when, when Tim goes to present about the importance of a website. You know, not everyone adopts and, and moves as quickly as you all on this webinar here um, to the changing landscape of marketing. I mean, there are still people taking out advertisements in the Roanoke Times or the Washington Post or the San Francisco Chronicle, but more than 75% of the U.S. population is online. Not all of them are using Instagram and Pinterest and all these different tools, but a lot of them know about websites and how to find websites. And you'll see that a lot of people are becoming more comfortable with buying online. So e-commerce has grown to more than 800, 
185 million people, and these numbers continue to grow. A lot of small business owners are saying, how do I get started online? And Google is actually doing a lot of outreach around the country to help people get online and listed in Google. And so there is a very, very clear and important opportunity there. And Tim will go into a little bit more in depth about how you can take social feeds and bring them onto your website. But there is still an importance of having a website as kind of a base, a hub for your business. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so moving on, uh, let's talk about modern marketing, right? What, what is modern marketing and how is that different than what we see in uh, the traditional lens, right? Modern marketing includes social media, all these different tools. It has Facebook, it has Twitter, there's LinkedIn, there's Google+. Plus. Um, you have Pinterest and Instagram, all these different tools. It can get a little bit overwhelming, but there's a lot of ways to connect with people where they already are. Um, next that you're going to hear, you've heard probably a lot about, we're not going to necessarily cover today. It could be in some future webinars. Is content marketing, you know, writing a good blog post. How do you get it seen? Um, is it important to be consistent? How do you make sure that people know what your blog is? What stuff do you write about, right? And, and, and ways to really give people value. Um, one of my personal um, kind of idols in the marketing sp place space is a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk, and he said, you know, the key right now is one, authenticity wins, and number two is the way that you actually get someone to buy a product. He actually used the analogy and said, you jab, 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 right hook. And what he means by that is you add value, add value, add value, add value, add value, and then eventually ask for a sale. And um, another one of my idols. Is a guy named Seth Godin, and he said, "I love him. I love him. <laughs> he is an absolute, absolutely amazing, amazing marketer." And he said, "In order to get someone to buy a product or to really think that you have any legitimacy at all, is you have to turn a stranger into a friend, and a friend into allows you to turn customers into evangelists by giving them really good content." But we're not going to go into the specifics of content marketing on on the web today. We're not necessarily going to cover email marketing. But I wanted to give you an overall view of kind of what, what's made up of modern marketing. And there's email marketing, which ties into Facebook, but we're not going to go into email marketing strategies today. So we're really, really focused here today on social media. So the far left of this picture right here. Okay. So kind of where were we from a social media perspective? I talked a little bit earlier about how digital marketing is now a hard science. You know, half the money I spent on advertising was wasted. The trouble is I don't know which half. The coolest thing about that I think as someone who studied economics and, and loves loves the analytical side of marketing is that digital marketing is now a hard science. Is that we can actually quantify returns of our time spent of different advertising uh, avenues, and so can you, right? How many leads did you generate from this campaign? Did you follow up with those leads, and how many of them actually ended up buying your product? You can do different statistics to find out how loyal someone is. I mean, there's there's so many ways online that you can really quantify your efforts, and it's really, 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 really powerful. And a lot of that's through social media, and the tools are already, already available for you without having to do anything extra, okay? So here, I'll just say that social media, before we get started, is a mindset. It's not a tool. You can have all the tools in the world. Tim will recommend a bunch for you at the end, but at the end of the day, it is a mindset of ways to connect and relate to your customers or potential customers. What I mean I absolutely is, agree with this. Absolutely. It, it, what I mean by this, Tim, as you know, is it's a two-way and authentic, engaging relationship. I would never meet you on the street at a networking event and say, hi, my name is Brandon. Check out my blog. Check out my blog. Hey, my name is Brandon. Check out my blog. Check, check out my blog today and just <laughs> shout a one-way message. Instead, I would say, hey, how's it going? How, how are you today? Let me learn about something about you and ask you a question about something you care about in order for you to think that I'm important. It's the same exact Absolutely. idea on social media, and it's really, really, really important that you understand that you can have all the tools in the world, but it does not mean you'll, you, you'll be successful unless you really, really believe in that mindset and you apply it to the way that you engage with the tools available to you. So I just wanted to really preface everything by saying that. And next, I just want to ask you all a question before we go into the specifics of custom Facebook applications. I'll give you a little sneak peek. But are you all learning a lot so far? Just comment on the pinned post. I'll, again, bring you right back to that here. Comment on this post and let me know, yes or no. Are you learning a lot so far? All right. Give you guys just a second there. I'm going to go in there myself. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Let 
Matt said, don't watch this because he saw the video, and you guys can watch that a little bit later. <laughs> All right, so I'll wait one more second, and then we'll get started with the, the next piece here of this content. All right. Thank you, Tim. Okay, going back to this here. All right, so the, let's talk about the importance of custom Facebook applications. So we want to talk about that social media part. We're going to focus a little bit on Facebook right now. So Facebook marketing as a whole, it's important to make sure that your brand is where everyone else is. The goal, again, like I said, is to be genuine, authentic, and provide value to your fans. What this is a picture of is actually our editor um, about how to make a custom Facebook fan page without with just dragging and dropping. No code required. Custom Facebook fan page applications help drive traffic, leads, and sales, and they do so by running contests, promotions, and deals. That's the really, the, at the end of the day, what is more important than your business getting traffic, your business getting leads, and your business getting sales? So what are custom tabs? Custom tabs are these little beautiful boxes that you see on every fan page. Some of them just say events or photos, but you can actually add additional tabs here, and you can really drive people to that through emails, you can drive them on your Facebook statuses, and a lot of times people just are SMS guide. You can always know if it's a tab if it says app at the top here. And this SMS text messaging guide, we give people amazing, amazing content. Here it says mobile is set to take over, overtake the internet, but we want their email. If they're interested in our text messaging guide, we believe that they're also possibly interested in a product from Hale, right? So, so this allows us to get an email and a name. And then we, we, we typically ask them if they're interested in, in more learning more about Hale. If they say no, absolutely fine. Uh, we just wanted to see. And sometimes they say yes, and then we might proceed with asking them and showing them our product, maybe a demo of it, um, to show them how they can be successful with Hale. But it just kind of gives you an idea of our page here. You're going to see these tabs. And if you click on one, you can either get started. This will actually drive from a quick way to, to, to kind of build little mini kind of websites, and we call them tabs, within Facebook page, okay? So it's a really, really, really important piece for your business from a Facebook perspective, okay? Going to the next slide here, like I said, it's traffic, leads, and sales. You can run campaigns to get someone to like your page before they can do anything else. Um, you can also run something that is uh, an email capture is let me show you Lily Poulter as an example from a lead perspective. In order to enter this Pinterest contest that they have, you have to like the page first. So what we do, as you'll see here, excuse me, that one actually, let me go to the other one we built for them. Hold on. This is something we built for them. But you'll see here before you actually, before you actually um, can get the content, you actually have to like the page. You can actually in, input an image above the picture to actually get entice someone to like a page. You can be really, really, really creative here. Um, and then lastly, I want to show you from a sales perspective. So you saw traffic, which is this like gate here. Um, someone you know getting great traffic, getting likes. It's a way for them to kind of click to like. You saw a way to get leads with that email capture I just showed you. And from a sales perspective, I love this page for Moxie Clothing. They use Hale, and in here, if you just click on Shop Moxie, they put their entire website within Facebook, which just takes 30 steps. I can add it to a cart. I can select my country to buy it. Everything right within Facebook without knowing how to code or anything. And then once you click on Checkout, it'll bring you to another page. That's really cool. And also to get some more leads. And this is a great segue, and it kind of, okay, I don't have people to start, so how am I supposed to get leads and sales, right? I mean, what are different ways to drive more likes onto your Facebook page? And that'll be the next, the next part. Before I get started, though, I want to see if any of you all have any questions. This has been a lot to take in at one, at one time. So just let me know if you all have any questions at all. And that comment, that, I, that, uh, that pin post there with a funny video for my birthday, just let me know if you have any questions, <laughs> and we'll make sure our team's answering them. Um, and then we'll go on to the more likes, okay? I'll give you guys just a moment to, to see if we have any questions there. And I'll just check here, Tim. Second. Uh, 
All right. So it doesn't look like we have any questions, which is fine. Just always let me know. We want to make sure that we're able to answer all of your all's questions. So, okay. Going back to the presentation here. All right. Hey, Brandon, I had a question for you. Sure. Go ahead, Tim. You know, on your Hale page, um, you have around 40,000 likes. It's a lot of likes. Um, how long did that, like, kind of take you guys or, you know, some techniques that you guys can, uh, you can dawn upon me and, I guess, our, our uh, listeners as well? Sure, sure. Uh, we spend a lot of time. Um, we actually have a whole content schedule where we, we work to, to provide really good content. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we use some of these uh, different techniques I'll get into in a moment. But really, it's about content. Uh, when we were Le Jour, we were, uh, before Hale, we were called something else. And we yeah. had a lot of uh, uniqueness to our company because not, not, not a lot of companies were in the space. We were one of the first people to get into uh, the social marketing space. And um, just by having engaging contests, going out on, on the market and connecting with influencers and telling them about what we're doing, and then, and then always driving people to Facebook. Because we feel okay. like if you're on Facebook, you get that sticky relationship with someone where you can really, really engage with them later on. Um, they're a fan once, and then they can continually engage. And like I talked about earlier, it's jab, 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 right hook. We're only right. going to post valuable, fun content. But I would also say make sure you make that content exclusive on Facebook so they can't get in anywhere else. So it gives me a reason to like your page. To keep coming back there too. And exactly. Yeah. And that's what actually I do with Red Bull. Red Bull is my, probably my favorite brand right now. Because if I go to their Facebook page, I'm getting a unique experience I can't get anywhere else. So right. I actually go to their Facebook page like at least once a week um, and think about how you can take that as a brand. Right, right. right. Thanks. So now that you have determined Facebook to be important, how do you get noticed? So you saw the, the impacts of it. You can have sales, leads, traffic. First stop, first step is to don't stop <laughs> believing. I, I hope a lot of you are laughing on this. Um, as you see the baby singing one of the most famous journey songs of all time is that it might be a little bit frustrating to get started with Facebook to get it to get kind of the the leads and the and the likes to get started but but don't worry a consistent strategy always always will prevail so these are the the all the easy one there is ads right anyone can run an ad you can test ads there's an entire group of people out there that run webinars on how to maximize Facebook ads, we've listened to some of those. We use ads for some of our webinars where we show demos of our product. Um, also, like I showed you a little bit earlier, a light gate. So if you have something really, really enticing for me to click on or you have a status that maybe I checked out because my friend saw it and it says, hey, uh, check this out and, it, and it's something where they have to like the page before, before doing anything else, that's a really, really great way to get to capture that like. If you're a business with a store, Include your Facebook page and make it as easy as possible for anyone to like it all the time. One thing we, we always, we'll always, always recommend is to include in-store signage. Uh, it's called text to like. I don't know if you all knew this, but if you, let's say text like and then whatever your Facebook page name is, like Heyo, if you text that like Heyo to the number 32665, it will automatically like it on my smartphone. Uh, wow, I did not know that. Very, very powerful. So what ends up happening is, let's say you're at a presentation or you're around friends and you have an opportunity, always, always capture that like. Hey, guys, just check, go text like to 32665, like, you know, Brandon's Cupcake to 32665. <laughs> um, so once you start getting some likes, and it might start with you just inviting friends and having friends like your stuff and then a friend of a friend, and, and maybe you run some ads every once in a while and you test different things. To get started, you're including it in in-store signage, you're telling people to text like, you're including it on business cards and emails and so forth. And then you it's all about engagement, right? So engaging and setting a calendar, having something that is worth commenting on. Um, how many of you, and again, this is rhetorical because we uh, don't necessarily want to unmute everyone at the same time, but how many of you have ever seen a random Facebook video on your page that's been shared a thousand, thousands of times and you're like, Okay, let me check out that page. What are they doing? Um, it's just creating shareable content, right? So mm -hmm. there are ways for you to, to create virality. I wouldn't have that as a core marketing strategy. I think consistency wins, but it's really, really about testing and figuring out what works. Looking at the data, right? You, you, there's different ways of analyzing that information on Facebook. Don't get overwhelmed. This doesn't have to be your whole life. Uh, it can be just a consistent strategy that might be 20 minutes a day.
right? right? Just making sure that you're consistent, your fans know what to expect. So and the last part I want to say here is really having that commitment. Like I talked about earlier, it's a commitment. It, social media is a commitment. It's not a campaign. It's a mindset, not a tool. Make it sure that it's a part of your marketing plans and efforts is crucial. Um, it's very easy to be lazy and just run an ad in the local paper, but it's also impossible to quantify how much success that had for you unless you want to take the extra time and ask every person that came in your door how they heard <laughs> about you. Um, so here's some additional ways, right? So engaging fans through provocative content. We'll talk briefly about liking strategies and, and using the graph search. We'll talk about running a successful contest and that how that can actually lead to some viral content. And then we'll also show a little bit, again, re, some of that's repeat, but recapping that fan gate to incentivize some of those likes. I'm not going to go through this too fast. I'll make sure you guys can really take it in. But then if you have any questions at the end or during this, feel free to ask on that pinned post at facebook.com slash heyo. First, proven content. What works out there, right? Provocative. One of the companies that we love following is Target. Um, they do a phenomenal job of engaging people. Do you see here they say, Bullseye is getting a leg up on the competition by training with C9 gear. How do you plan to be more active? They ask a question, right? And then, haven't slept yet? Why start now? I mean, this is something that I might like. It's a, it's a, cool, it's a cool little thing, right? It's, it's a way for me to it provoke some type of feedback and some type <laughs> of content. Um, so look online and see what works. See what other people are doing. Don't necessarily reinvent the wheel here. Um, why is this important? Transparency. Right, so you're asking questions, but you're also engaging. After you ask the question, you're asking them. You're actually responding, making sure that you respond to any question that someone asks on your page or responds. Word of mouth marketing. If I comment on Tint, it's going to go and show my followers that I commented on Tint in their news. So you'll see their natural news feed growth. I won't get necessarily too much into edge rank, but just know that that's exactly how Facebook tracks what shows up in the news feed. How do you do it? We recommend short closed response questions. We respond you comment to every we respond to every single comment with a user tag. And then what that does is that keeps the conversation rolling for return traffic. Hmm. Some best practices here are include pictures and if you have a picture or a video. And weirdly enough, guess what the best two pictures are on Facebook, Tim? It's it's a cat and a baby picture. Those are the I two. Did, I, I was just about to say cat for the first one. But it's, I, you know, it's <laughs> We have these smartphones, and it's so funny because we have an entire world on our on our hands of the internet and knowledge, and we use take most of the time to look at cat pictures. I, I don't get it, but everyone loves cat pictures. So it's cute. Um, it's here cute. you also see uh, it is <laughs> um, yes or no or true and false questions work really well. And like we've kind of talked about, and Tim will continue to talk about as a theme, part of who you are. Facebook status update, and those are just some really really key ways for you to be successful. Search. Uh, some of you may have heard about Facebook coming out with a graph search here. Very, very, very powerful. It's a way for you to um, find people or find interest or, or really the benefit here is to find businesses, right? You're all here and saying, how do I get people to discover me? Um, you have Google. You might have your business listed on various sites from Think about the importance of capturing that like. Imagine if this bar here said people um, restaurants near me that my friends like, or restaurants in San Diego that my friends like, or, resta or, or a, a dentist in Boston that my friends like, and, and you can search that way, right? So the graph search is, is there's three pillars of Facebook, and the first is that news feed, right? So the news feed is 7% of all traffic online comes through the news feed on the entire world. The timeline, so your personal page there shows you you can go back into history and Facebook wants to make sure that you're able to capture your life from beginning all the way until you're really, really old and gray. They want to make sure they capture you from when you're a baby all the way through and they do that through the timeline. So newsfeed is to find out what's relevant and what's, what your fans and friends are doing and what your business places that you like are doing. And then the third pillar that Facebook described when they launched the, the, the graph search was graph search. They can consider it such a core component for discovery, which is amazing for businesses. So how can you get seen on, on uh, Facebook, right, in the graph search, if I'm searching? And I do search. If I go to another city um, on travel, I was just in Chicago, I said, restaurants in Chicago my friends like, 
and I have some friends in Chicago, and boom, I didn't even have to ask them. I just said, okay, do that here. Make sure you update your About section, and all you have to do there is make sure that you have some metadata. So if people are searching on Google um, or they're searching on Facebook, you could possibly show up. Make sure you update your location. So if someone, rather than saying near me, they say in whatever city you want to be in, make sure that you say that. And you may be asking, well, what if I'm a digital company? You know, one thing I would say is, is test some different things out. Test, test some cities, test some different things, or where you're located personally, or where you're going to be next week. I mean, you can switch it up and see if that adds adds different leads there. Uh, make sure you're always authentic and honest, but you can always kind of look at location as think of it from the user's perspective of what they would be looking for. And then lastly, it's update your hours and grow engagement. So there are four places that the graph search focuses, right? And and the one that's most of interest to you is places. But you can say friends. You can find people. People who like tennis and live nearby. So I can actually message someone and say, hey, I like tennis too. I'd love to shoot, play a game with you. Would you do that? Is Facebook going to become that for people? Kind of a matching service? I don't know. It may. They, they want it to be. right? That's the, the, the focus of graph search. Photos. Facebook, one of the reasons they bought Instagram was to and looking at your photos of your friends or, or yourself back in a couple years ago. Really, really whatever it is related to photos. Places. Now, this is where you can really, really, really win. It's restaurants. It's a, it's a bike shop. It's a dentist. Any type of business category on Facebook, on the page, you can actually be seen by people searching and making sure that you have that like from some other people. So it's related to that first slide we showed, how everything's kind of connected. They're actually taking that and allowing your business to experience success through those connections. And then lastly is interests. So a fan gate. We talked briefly about this. I showed you an example, but I just want to kind of recap what that would look like. You see here, Precision Breakworks. They have a little arrow going up before you can get any type of offer, which is another way of really driving people to want to like your page. And you get an exclusive offer if they like the page. It's exclusive to Facebook to get, say, 30% off an alignment for a local um, auto body place. Leads through fan gates, right? Why is that important? Why do you have a fan gate? You can capture leads. You can reward those loyal fans. So if I already like the page, that coupon is going to show up, so you can reward those people who already liked it. It's a way for you to engage with future people. You can drive people to it. Let's say you're running a 30% deal off at an at a, uh, auto body. The only way you can get it is if you like our page on Facebook. Do you see how I just kind of went full circle there of a way to actually incorporate that mm -hmm. with your overall marketing strategy? How? You familiarize with Facebook promotion guidelines, familiarize yourself. Look online and see what you can and cannot do. Um, I didn't want to go too dry here. Um, I can always send up some follow-up information and put that on our Facebook page. But make sure that you familiarize yourself with what you can and cannot do. Um, one thing that we're noticing with behavioral trends of people making decisions online is that the lower your barriers to entry to do anything to engage with your company, the better success, the better results. So make sure you keep those sign-up barriers really, really, really low. And then lastly is also to pick a relevant prize. I'm not going to go get an a oil change for 2% off. I might be interested in oil change for the first time of 50% off if I like the page. It might make me switch that provider, right? Um, so pick something that's relevant, and, and that's something you might want to test out and see what works the best. So if you have a light gate and you have a coupon underneath it, um, just pick something that's really relevant to your audience that they would really, really enjoy. Think in the eyes of the consumer. Some best practices, consider using Facebook advertisements to drive people to that page to like it. Um, and you can really, really target people. Um, and, and, and I would say we can have an entire conversation about Facebook ads, but just get started. Test it out. See what you can find. See what happens by doing it if you have a fan page. And then use a third-party application like Heyo, or there's a lot of other companies like there, ShortStack and, and TabSite and all these different companies, to build that like gate. Right? I, I, we definitely recommend the like gate, whether it's through Heyo or somebody else, for those beautiful tabs on Facebook. Lastly, we're talking about some Facebook contests that work to drive people to share what you're doing with their networks. To give you some statistics here, the average person on Facebook has about 230 friends. 230 friends. So anyone that shares a message to their entire faith, Facebook friends, you're getting possibly 230 new pairs of eyeballs looking at whatever your company is doing. Very powerful. Here's a successful contest that we ran, actually, with um, Gary V. So we have a video here um, of a tab. We had them enter their email. 
we got thousands of emails from this because we were promoting with a fun video, engaging, and we were driving everyone there to the new book of the Thank You Economy. And we worked actually a little bit with Gary to try to get him to help promote us by showing him the video. So we did some creative marketing to get this kind of to have some, um, uh, some kind of virality. And, and what we would see here, give me just a moment, is that people can enter their name and email. They also have the ability to share um, with their friends to get more entries and so forth. There's ways that you can really run successful contests within Facebook. So why? Why do you do contests on Facebook? It's a way for you to barter. It's a way to get content for a like. Again, like I talked about a little bit earlier, it applies here as well to get word of mouth marketing. If they spread the contest because they want to win and get more likes, they might tell their Twitter friends or they might tell their Facebook friends. It's a way for you to qualify your fans as leads with that email opt-in that you see right here. How, right? So how do you actually do it, right? You have some type of intriguing or mysterious content. The best way we find is to provide a sneak peek, to show people like that light gate, right? To, some type of contest, try to give them a little bit of a sneak and get them enticed to actually do it. And then also guide them to all the different like buttons, different things with, with graphics. Really, really work. There's a lot of different free graphics online that you can use. Um, just type in like arrow onto, onto Google and you can get an arrow like you saw here. You know, you can find that on Google Images. Um, so best, pro, best practices for uh, contests are to always include a promo code or a discount. Sometimes people will do like some type of ebook or white paper. Think to yourself how many of you have heard of HubSpot. Anytime you search anything on Google, yeah, they're going to sure. come out with content, and they always are asking you to enter information before downloading the free content. And then, they're again, they're jabbing, 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 jabbing right hook. I'm not going to buy something unless I really know more about it, and a lot of consumers feel the same way nowadays. Wouldn't you agree, Tim? Yes, absolutely. Just provide good content for your, for your audiences. Absolutely. And you'll see here, again, have fun with it. The more fun you have, the, think about it, the more fun your fans have. So to recap, engage fans through provocative content. Look into Facebook's graph search. Make sure that you are really, really have everything up to par with your about section, your location. Run successful contests within Facebook and setting up a fan gate to incentivize likes. Those are four different ways for you to get more likes on Facebook. And we talked a little bit earlier ads and the different things. It just sometimes. Sometimes it's a marathon, not a sprint. It doesn't happen overnight. But you just can't stop leaving. Like someone, um, and to move another question here, you comment on the pin post on Hale's Facebook to let me know, and I'll let, let you guys take a second, and we'll go from there. All right. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Keep going. All right, Stephen. I hear I'm, you. I'm I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go with me. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. I just want to make sure that you're enjoying this this so far. We have some great content to still go over with you. All right. Give me just a moment. I'll get back to the presentation here. All right. How to build a mobile app in just seconds. This is something very interesting that Facebook has not adopted. And honest to God, it's the reason that our company has a really, really valuable place in the market. Is that they do not let you show custom tabs on mobile. So if you go to a, a Facebook fan page and it has um, tabs and you try to go to the same Facebook fan page from your mobile phone, you're not able to see those. Those, little, those beautiful boxes right under the fan page you can't see. So if, let's say you have a really beautiful light gate or a custom um, uh, email capture. You can't see those on mobile. Just to give you a little bit of background on mobile marketing, we believe it's here to stay, as Tim said a little bit earlier, and we see that it's growing fast. So giving your customers the optimal experience is going to really be the difference between ordinary and extraordinary. And you'll see here is our, our drag and drop mobile editor, kind of a preview there. Uh, Wesley's Facebook fantasy football tips. It's not necessarily the best designer, but it's a way to get started. <laughs> um, one thing I want to talk about is how what smart URLs are and how they play a role and how this all works. 
So let's say you go through Hale or, or, or some provider out there and you build a mobile app. One thing that Hale does is we allow you to put Facebook fan page apps instantaneously on a mobile platform to give users a beautiful mobile experience. So how do you drive them to that mobile experience on their phone? Say you have a status update and you go to a website called smarturl.it. It automatically detects if the user is on a desktop or mobile phone, it's all trackable. So this is what it looks like. You have a default URL, which is going to be that app that I showed you a little bit earlier. So it's going to be here. Um, let's go to Heyo. It's going to be this little app here, right? And then, then you're going to have all these devices, and you can have its own URL. And Heyo is going to populate something that's like m.heyo once you publish your mobile app. And you can just put that right in there, and it will automatically detect your Facebook fan page tab on mobile. Absolutely amazing. So to give you an example, this is what Lily Pulitzer, one of our clients, did, is they used it as a bit.ly so they can really, really track it. And if they're on a mobile phone, so if I go to Lily Pulitzer's Facebook fan page from my mobile device, I'm going to see um, the experience that looks like that. But if I'm on a Facebook fan page, I'm going to see an experience that looks like. Let's actually, let's actually do it, so I'll show you guys what happens. Going a little bit slow. Just a way, like let's say you were on a mobile phone and you went to that link, it would go right to that mobile app. And just to show you kind of what that looks like. App. Taking a second. So I'll Brandon, you're back. <laughs> hey, Brandon, you're back. Internet here. Tim, can you hear me? Yes, you're back. Okay, I'm back here. So I don't know how far you all got. Uh, I apologize. I don't know what happened here. But I just wanted to show you that Lily Pulitzer tab here and you click on this link from a smart URL. Tim, what was the last slide that everyone left off on? What just happened? But here you'll see that um, th this is what the actual mobile experience looks like for the end user. And again, this is on a desktop, so it's not going to look pretty right now. But if I make that into a mobile version, you'll see. I'll just show you here. All right. Tim, yes. Are you over this page here? Um, it's Go back to the presentation. It doesn't seem to be loading. Hey, Brandon, do you want to just wrap Tim, up your just, Tim, give me just a moment. If you want to continue, Tim. Yeah, yeah I'll just wrap this up and talk about what you learned. Um, you learned the overview of the state of web and social. You learned the importance of custom Facebook applications. You also learned about how to drive more likes on your Facebook page. And then lastly, you learned how to build a mobile app in just seconds. And now I'm going to hand it over to Tim. I'm going to let him show everything on his computer to go over what you're going to learn today from, from Tim, okay? Let's do it. And thank uh, you all for having it I appreciate it. it. Sure. There you go. Boom. Thank you, Tim. Yes. Um, let me wait for you to hand it over to me. There you go. Brandy, do you see everything? I do. You all are good. All right, cool. 
Hey everybody, um, Tim here again, and I uh, just wanted to just dive right into everything and um, won't take too much of your time, but um, you know what I wanted to just share was you know how to grow Instagram followers, how to grow more Twitter followers, um, why your website is just as important as your Facebook page or any of your social media accounts, and then lastly about six to seven new social media tools that you may or may not have heard of that I've been using have been very effective for me. So to just go right in, um, you know, I wanted to share some things that uh, we've been able to see and learn about how to grow more Instagram followers. There's about eight things that I just wanted to share. So the first one, um, actually right before that is, um, here's a quick overview of how much activity is going on on Instagram every day or every second. Um, or every month, and uh, basically this gives you an idea of how many you know users are on actively per month, right? About 100 million, um, 40 million photos shared per day, um, about 8,500 8, likes press per second. So that's a crazy amount of engagement, and about a thousand comments shared per second. So as you can see, this just gives you an overview of why you know Instagram's here to stay and why everyone's active on it and why you should consider um, being more active on it because it, it provides a lot more um, engagement with your audiences and again builds that trust uh, so that they can be you know your evangelist um, as time goes forward. So the first thing what I wanted to share was that um, uh, you want to the first thing is you want to share relatable humanized photos. So you know as Brandon said you know you want to keep social media as humanized as possible. You're not going to go to someone on the street and just say hey like my photo, like my post, you know comment on this blah blah blah. You know you want to provide you know some behind the scenes shots, some things that you're doing, um, some inspirational scenery that you found, anything that can connect with the audience in an emotional level and not so much as a brand, right? You want to keep it as humanized as possible. And it's real, you know, social media is all about connecting with your audiences. So if you give them great images that they can draw some sort of emotion to, they will, um, you know, inevitably like it, comment on it, and even follow you uh, because they want more great photos from you. Um, it's something that you won't even need to be actively asking for, and if you just, you know, be humanized, um, show them, you know, your perspective of things that you're seeing, um, you'll definitely see your uh, following start to grow. The second one's pretty easy, um, and not many people do it, um, is to just connect your Facebook account, um, you know, because since uh, Instagram is now part of Facebook, more and more Instagram activity gets streamed into the Facebook feed now um, with priority. Um, so you know they you know Facebook sees a big investment and a big uh, um, importance in photos because that just draws the most amount of engagement photos and videos. So um, you know you want to connect your Facebook because uh, that'll just you know feed in your um, activity, feed in um, people who like your act your your photos on Instagram into their uh, Facebook wall, and so that just gives you more exposure. And with more exposure, people can uh, follow you more. Um, and not to mention, you know, they, Instagram also helps you now auto follow or find your Facebook friends so that, you know, the more people you can find or people can find you, the easier it'll allow you to grow. Then the third one is to use relevant popular hashtags. So actually what I did was I pulled in, I showed the, the top 20 tags on Instagram today. Um, anywhere from love to Instagood to TBT, which is Throwback Thursday. You know, what you want to do is, you know, include one to three hashtags on each photo that are relevant to your photo. Don't just put these in because you want more likes because then that will just look like spam. And obviously when people see spam then they just ignore you and you know start distrusting your brand more and more. Um, so basically um, you know there are people looking for or searching with hashtags today. You know if it, if it comes to if it's Christmas people are going to be searching for hashtag Christmas just to see you know how the world is spending Christmas and if your photo is there it will give that exposure if you have that um, uh, hashtag along with it. Um, so again, you want to have about one to three hashtags, nothing more, um, or else it'll start looking like spam. And don't just put in these because you want more followers. Um, you know, if anything, take photos that have these kind of hashtags so that it can be relevant to your audiences. The fourth one is, um, you know, something fun to look at is, you know, the type of filters do matter. Um, you know, here I showed you a graph. I'm showing you guys a graph of, you know, which one's the most popular, who's using what, um, and what type of people are using what type of filter. Um, and you can just take a look. Like the normal is obviously the most. Um, even though Instagram was meant to be built with, you know, making your photos that much more beautiful, but you know, have fun with the filters. Filters give you that beauty and that uniqueness that no one else has, right? So for each photo, um, and so when you can make your photo more inspirational, more breathless, or more memorable, uh, people want to engage with that photo and like it. And of course, when they like it, then they want to follow more, follow you to get more uh, photos uh, with that. So. Filters do matter. Um, you know, try to make it unique. Try to make it uh, fun and make it memorable. 
The fifth one is um, timing. Timing is key. Um, as you can see in this graph that, you know, one of the best times of engagement is actually from 5 to 6 p.m. on Wednesday. Well, I can attest that 5 to 6 p.m. makes a lot of sense because you're going home from work and you're on the subway, you're on a bus, you're <laughs> hopefully you're not driving and watch, looking at your phone. Um, but at that time when you're, you know, done with the day and you're, you're feeling you need some relaxing time, you're going to look, you want to look at photos because photos make you relax, right? And so you want to see what your friends are sharing what your brands you're following are sharing and so at that time it's, it's it's best to share around that time because that's when most of your audiences will be on Instagram looking for things looking for things to engage with um, and apparently you know through studies they've been able to see that Wednesday has been one of the most effective uh, days to share photos um, another thing that you may want to know is that typically an Instagram photo has a life of three to four hours so that um, until after that time it'll get pushed down and won't be found as much anymore. So it is optimal to figure out, you know, times that your audiences will engage with. You know, I can also say in the morning, you know, when people wake up, they, they, they like looking at photos. So maybe, you know, start sharing some at the, during the morning so that, you know, you'll be able to capture them right when they're looking at it uh, without, you know, um, going past the three to four hour lifetime. The sixth one is to have a call to action. Um, very simple, but um, you know sometimes very often missed, which is, you know, provide a you know call to action. Whether it be double tap this if you like this, uh, you know, comment with your favorite caption, um, you know, share this or tag someone that you know that relates to this photo. You know, make it fun, make it humanized. Again, it's not about just promoting yourself. It's all about engaging with the, the with your audiences. And again, so with more engagement, it means more exposure and more potential to get followers. The seventh one is, um, I don't know if you can see this, sorry about that, but it's basically to engage by following others and liking their photos. So if you expect people to engage with you, they expect the same as well, right? It's a, it's a, it's a two-way street, it's reciprocated. Um, that means you need to engage, engage, and engage with your, your followers, or your, the people you're following, um, either liking it, commenting on it. You know, I myself have found myself going to other people's Instagram account and following them because they like my photo or they commented on it. You know, it always feels good to have someone comment or like your photo. And so in, recipro in reciprocation, you know, you want to follow them back. Um, and basically, uh, that's been, that's where I've seen myself be able to do that. And, you know, you should be doing that as well. And lastly, you want to combine multiple images. Um, the main reason behind that is one photo is a thousand words, right? But what about four? What about eight photos? It, it exponentially increases the emotional uh, attraction to that photo. Um, you know, provide a storyline. You know, the first quadrant would be you know when it starts. The last quadrant would be it ends. Um, you know, let let your followers have that storyline just visually imagined and. Um, there's tools like PicStitch uh, that you can just download that allows you to combine multiple photos and then share it um, onto Instagram seamlessly. Um, so again, it's all about kind of telling stories, you know, um, letting them feel emotionally connected to that photo and get them to engage more so that they'll follow you more. So those are the main eight things um, about uh, Instagram that you can use and very simple uh, to get more followers. On Twitter, um, just about nine things and these are very simple things that you can do within today. And I recommend you because it has been working very uh, well for my brand and uh, myself as well. So the first one is to use a relevant photo and cover photo. Um, you know, no one wants to see this because it just looks like it's a spammer. You don't know if they're legitimate or not. So definitely include a photo and definitely include a profile or cover photo on your Twitter um, account. Have a unique Twitter bio. You know, quickly explain who you are, what you do, and what you're interested in. Um, if I can find, if I read that very quickly, I will know if I want to follow you or not. But if you don't provide anything for me, then I don't know if I should or if you should be spamming my wall or will you be spamming my wall and, um, you know, blocking me from more relevant content that I want. So definitely, you know, have a real name, Twitter handle, you know, a good photo, uh, a website to show legitimacy and a quick recap of who you are, what you do and what you're going to be tweeting about. Third thing is tweet consistently, not excessively. Um, I would say, um, no one wants to follow someone that tweeted 10 weeks ago because it just seems like it's not, you know, you're not a brand or an active brand. A good habit to follow is about three to five tweets per day spaced out within a few hours each. Um, this will remind your followers who you are but allow them to keep engaging with you. But uh, at the same time, you don't want to be a person who keeps sharing every minute because it'll clog your new followers' news feeds and then, you know, you have one ticket to someone just unfollowing you. 
Um, so that's what I would say. Um, one thing is also, you know, if you want to reply to a bunch of people, just make sure you have the at username in front of your uh, tweet as the first thing, so that on, your your followers won't get spammed. Only the the follow or the person that you're tweeting at will be able to see that. The fourth one is to tweet with opinions and questions. Um, you know, no one wants to just uh, you know see a promotion. They want to engage with it. They want to answer you back, and they want to be able to converse with you. And so, you know, here it just says, you know, what's your favorite, uh, you know, tip that you know, uh, in this link? You know, let us know. And um, the more people can engage with you, you know, the more people will be able to want to follow you more because they trust you, and their friends will be able to know that since they're engaging with you, they should be engaging with you too. The fifth one is to tweet with relevant hashtags. So, you know, I wrote a blog post about, you know, how Shark Tank helped me get my startup funded. And, um, you know, if I don't include the hashtag Shark Tank, no one, ever, no one will ever find it. And I know a lot of people search Shark Tank because it's a very popular show on ABC. But, um, you know, have your hashtags on your posts so that people can find it very easily when they're searching for it. You know, whether it be you're sharing something about social media, add a hashtag social media to it. Um, hashtag startups if you're working on a startup. You know, have that so people will be able to find you. And people are searching for that, so you definitely want to include that. And I, I cannot say that enough how important that is. That so many, so many times, Tim, people will try to make their own hashtag, but it's not something that people will search. We've oh, absolutely, some, yeah. We, we've done some research that show that when you have, when we have a hashtag of marketing, we get a lot of leads that way. So when we use a, a really relevant hashtag, let's say you have a cupcake store and someone's looking for a cupcake, you can actually narrow down cupcake in the whatever city you're at through Twitter's advanced search. And if you like say something that people would actually search, and I search news all the time. I'll ser I search social media all the time to see what <laughs> yeah. people are talking about. And if you can be in that realm, in that space, using hashtags, very, 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 very powerful and important. To have relevant Absolutely. Hashtags. So there are, there are people looking for hashtags because they want to see information about that topic. So definitely include hashtags, relevant hashtags that you know. And a good way to just search it for yourself and you see there's a lot of activity, join in on that hashtag conversation. Good point. The sixth one is uh, spread your Twitter URL. Um, very simple, very easy to understand, but often missed, which is put it on your email uh, um, address, you know, your signature. Put it on your business cards. Put it on your Facebook uh, profile. Put it anywhere that you have a presence, and so people can find you very easily. Um, it's that simple. Um, you want to be everywhere um, so that people can find you very easily and be able to follow you with seamless um, uh, steps. Seventh one is... Um, like I said on Instagram, uh, if you want to, if you want, if you expect people to engage with you, you gotta engage back. So you want to retweet people. You want to, um, you know, uh, favorite some of their posts. You want to reply to some of their posts. Engage with them so that you can, um, they can be notified that you know you are someone that they should be talking with or be, you know, paying more attention to. And basically engage with your potential leads to say. Um, you know, awesome posts, thanks for sharing, you know, something like that where you can show that you care about them and they will care about you right after. Um, it's a very reciprocated, yes. Absolutely. So one thing I would say the most underrated thing on the internet is, is listening. Yes. And um, no, how many of you use your Twitter and you just go online and you go, okay, I got to tweet something out. And you tweet something out but you don't listen to anything else on your, on your feed. You don't look for someone else and what they're saying. Um, it's really, really powerful. Think of it from if someone did this to you. You tweeted and said, man, I really am in the mood for um, to go to a movie. And then Fandango said, hey, Brandon, I saw that you're interested in going to a movie. What do you think about this? Rather than them saying, hey, Fandango has movies. Hey, Fandango has movies. They have literally qualified and found a lead. And you do yeah. that by listening, retweeting, favoriting, showing people that, like, hey, they're, they're interested in what I have to say, just like I would do the same for someone that was interested in me, and I'm going to go check them out. I'm not going to just go to someone. I'm going to go check them out now. Yeah. Exactly. I'm never going to go to someone that just says, um, hey, yeah. check, out, check out my cupcake shop. Check out my cupcake shop on Twitter all day, which so many people are using Twitter to send one way messages and they're doing it wrong. They're doing it wrong. So. Absolutely. And so the more you engage with them, they're, they're going to want to come back and see who you are all about and then um, pretty much follow you because they, they, they now interact with you and they want to keep in conversation with you. Um, there are a couple tools that I want to show you that have been able to help us grow this um, kind of interaction and I'll share with you at the end. Um, the eighth one, out of, and there's one more after this, is follow relevant people. If you're all, so our company is all about social media and sharing good social media activity or tips. You know, I search for social media people and I follow them. If I follow them, they'll know to be notified and they want to potentially follow me back. It's a very simple way. Obviously, 
um, there's there's uh, you know a ratio a good rule of thumb is to have a one to one ratio so that means that you know you want to have if you have a hundred if you're following a hundred people you may want to have a hundred followers um, you don't want to look like you have a thousand people you're following and only have ten followers that just looks like you're just kind of um, kind of pushing too hard you know going too much at it um, so a good ratio to follow is a one to one ratio to show that you have a legitimacy people trust you and people should keep following you for more good information and the last thing is just remember, it's all about engaging, not promoting. Don't be uh, someone who's just pushing out promotions and trying to get traffic on purpose. It will not work. Um, it may work for maybe one day to two days, but it's not a good long-term strategy. It will falter and people will stop uh, following you or actually start unfollowing you because it just, it just looks like spam. Social media is all about conversations and engagement um, and less about promotion. Um, so the third thing I wanted to mention, and uh, this will be very quick, is you know, a lot of people overlook why you know, they should have a website and just focus strictly on social media. Well, here's four simple reasons why you should still consider having a website uh, and couple that with, you know, your social media accounts. So one is most people start on search engines to find what they want. They're not going to look on Facebook necessarily and say, I am looking for a tool that will allow me to do this. Facebook's not about that. Twitter's not about that. But um, on Google or Bing or, you know, these search engines all about finding um, companies finding uh, restaurants, finding places, finding services, and so you want to have that shelf space. You want to be known. You want to be there when they're searching for that. So it's still good to be have. Still important to have a website. And on a, a second thing is, you know, most people, uh, you know, find Facebook pages, but you know, sometimes the data shows that they don't necessarily go back to it um, on an active basis. They may come back maybe on a weekly basis, like Brandon mentioned, but on a daily basis, it's, it's not as, as, as um, you know, strong. So, um, you know, people will know where to always find you is it's your website. They know that that's your domain, that's your space on the web, on the whole World Wide Web, and they know where to find you. So you want to provide that for them if they ever need to go back and find more information about you. The third thing is obviously with free social networks, there's a bunch of ads around you, right? And so the more third-party ads that surround your brand messaging, it just you know lowers that trust quality. Imagine that you had a cupcake shop, you know, Facebook page, and then a Botox ad showed up on the site. You know, how what what kind of message does that bring to your audiences? Obviously, everyone knows that there's ads on Facebook, but you know, you want to be able to control you know your branding still, and so to have that website that gives you the ultimate control and um, be able to showcase you know who you really are and that trust you can provide to your audiences. And lastly, um, people you know will share your website or your blog post or your content if they like it. But rarely will they will they share your Twitter account or your Facebook account or your Pinterest account, right? Like, you know, that's that's for people to just follow and, and engage with. But if you want more traffic or more exposure, why leave that out? Why not? Why would you completely disregard a website when people will share your website um, because they like it a lot? They have found, they found good content that their followers can um, benefit from. So, uh, those are the main four things I would say that you know. Um, it's still very crucial and very important to have a, uh, a website, um, just as important as a Facebook page. But um, never disregard, you know, having a website because that is where your audiences will be able to find you and be able to know where to find you at any given time because they can just always search for you. And the last section that I wanted to finish off is, um, you know, some recommended social tools that I've been using, and I'll just kind of go off of them. Uh, I put the URL on the bottom of each of them so you can check them out yourself. So the first one, uh, maybe a lot of people have heard, is Buffer. Um, what they what they do is they are all about helping you have a smarter way to share. They allow you to do time, um, you know, schedule certain tweets, certain shares on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. They even now have recently launched a way to time when you should retweet someone. So that's very powerful, right? Like, let's say you don't want to retweet, um, you know, ten people at the same time because um, it, it may come out spam. But you don't have that much time. Now they actually let you uh, time and schedule when you want to retweet someone. I want to retweet someone in ten minutes, and then the next retweet should happen in thirty minutes, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, they'll let you do that. And everything's about scheduling on Buffer, so it's providing a smarter way to share to your audiences. So check them out at BufferApp.com. The second one is called Plug.io, and basically what they do is they help you find. Oh, what, how I use these people is um, they help me find who I should be following um, on Twitter. So basically, I can type in certain keywords, and they'll recommend me certain types of accounts on Twitter that I should be looking at and maybe following because of the way they tweet, the types of things they tweet, and their bio that they include in. It allows me to figure out who I should be following for more qualified leads. So check them out at Plug.io. 
Um, this one's one of my favorite ones that I just re uh, discovered, and uh, thanks to Brandon as well. It's called followgen.com. And basically, their idea is they're going to help you, um, you know, grow your followers, but in a whole new different way. And the new different way is allowing, um, ba making sure that all you need to do is just type in certain keywords, and every time there's a tweet about that keyword, FollowGen will make your Twitter account favorited. So favoriting means that it just goes into your favorite list and doesn't bother your followers. But what's great about that is, one, it doesn't follow, bother your followers and spam them. But two, it notifies your, uh, the person that you favorited, hey, I just recognized your tweet. I favorited it. Do you now, you know, implicitly do you want to follow me now? Um, I ran this for about five days. We got 100 to 200 free followers without me needing to do anything. So FollowGen is a very easy way to start um, growing your Twitter uh, following base just by typing in some keywords and then uh, FollowGen will automatically have your Twitter account favorite uh, those posts. So for me, I, I you know look for posts that have social media, hashtag social media, hashtag digital media, and basically I have really good follow like leads now that I can follow up with because now those leads recognize my brand, follow me, and now I can follow up with them. So this is a and great, great tool. The one thing about FollowGen though, I would, I would say is you can make it so it doesn't do it every time, but it only does it sporadically throughout the day, so it's not seem like you're favoriting every single one. Right, 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 absolutely. But the, the power of it, like, I just, I don't need to say anything else. Tim explained everything perfectly about it. Very cool. Yep, and so that's good. That's followgen.com. Here's another one called mention.net. Um, I was recently looking at this for, you know, I want to always figure out who's, you know, what Brandon said is, you know, one of the uh, underrated things people do is uh, listening, right? So mention.net is all about helping you listen. Uh, who's mentioning you on a blog post? Who's mentioning you on a forum post? Who's mentioning you on a tweet? Who's mentioning you on your Facebook share? This will allow you to figure out who's mentioning you and then allow you to follow up with that because anytime someone's mentioning you, either good or bad, it could be a potential lead or a potential customer, right? So you definitely don't want to lose that opportunity um, with your potential leads or customers. And uh, with Mention.net, you can, you're able to uh, track all that and be able to follow up with them very easily. Another one that I really like is called IFT. It stands for if this, then that. And basically the premise is, um, i give you an example here. On the 1st of October each year, um, tweet a link of the YouTube video Wake Me Up When September Ends. So basically, uh, IFT is all about creating quote unquote recipes. And another example is, if I like a photo on Instagram, make sure I share it on Facebook as well. Or if I upload something onto uh, Facebook, make sure it goes to, um, you know, make sure I track it on Google Docs. You have all these different channels that you can create recipes, and it basically follows if this, then that. Um, so this will allow you to automate a lot of things. Um, let's say, you know, you use, uh, uh, you know, you use this, uh, you know, uh, product called uh, Pocket, which lets you bookmark things, right? Um, you could say, if I bookmark a link, then share it out on Twitter after. Um, so it allows you to really create these recipes, create these automation um, techniques that will you know, make your life easier and make your, uh, save you a lot of time. So they're at ifttt.com. And one of the last ones I really want to share is called Reportive. And although it's not a direct social media uh, tool, basically what it is is a Gmail plugin. And um, anytime you're actually about to email someone, um, it'll show you their Facebook, LinkedIn, their Twitter accounts, so you can quickly understand what they're sharing about um, you know, yesterday and be able to maybe follow up with them, you know, letting them know that you were actively listening to them, you were actively paying attention to what they share, and basically if you can humanize that interaction, they'll trust you more. Um, so definitely check out Reportive at Reportive.com. I use that every single day to be able to follow up with leads and be able to um, recognize that, you know, they are tweeting about this or that and I can uh, put that in the conversation. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, what you learned from me was how to grow more Twi uh, Instagram and Twitter followers, why your website is just as important as your Facebook page, and uh, you know, these six recommended tools. And um, lastly, I just wanted to conclude, um, you know, if you have any questions, go to our Facebook page and I'll, I'll answer back for sure. Um, really quickly, what we do is we're all about helping you um, display your social media feeds onto your website. We're all about helping make your website more engaging and social and interactive for your audiences. Right now, you may find it very difficult to update content onto your site because you may have to manually blog or manually update it. What we do is we're a plugin that allows you to you know, connect all your social media accounts, plug it into your website, and now every time you share across the social web, it'll be automatically displayed on your website. 
what that does is it, it you know, basically um, increases the reach and, and the lifetime of all your activity and your posts that you invest a lot of time and capital into. So that's what we are all about. But more importantly, um, we're all about teaching you what we learned, uh, how to you know, best effectively utilize social media, and um, hopefully you're able to take away some good key lessons. Um, I know Brandon and I will be um, you know, compiling all this information onto a slide share and, and sharing out that link to all of you so you guys can see all that. Um, and we'll be, this, whole uh, this whole webinar was recorded so you can actually look back into this. But overall, I really feel that you know, hopefully we were able to dawn um, some key new insights that you didn't know that you could take away from today. And um, like I said, please let us know if we can ever help you with anything. My personal email is tim, T-I-M, at tintup, T-I-N-T-U-P, dot com. And one thing I'll say about Tint that makes it really, really cool um, that I love is that it captures that ability for you to display those feeds on your website. So let's say you have a fan on your website, uh, someone visited, they might be a little bit older, and they want to see some real-time content without you having to do any extra work on sites you're already, you're already um, uh, put, promoting content on. It, it allows you just to put it seamlessly into that website. So you can really have unique experiences and reach new people uh, with really engaging tools without doing a lot of extra work. I mean, it's a very Absolutely. powerful tool um, that, that I certainly recommend for you guys. Um, but if, what questions do you have for us? Comment on Tint's page. Uh, we're here to ask questions, answer them. Um, you know that's that's what we're here for. So feel free to let me know if you guys have any questions at all. Um, we want to make sure that you get the most value out of out of this webinar. And if not, we'll wrap it up in just a moment. Let's see. We'll see if there's any hand raised, and if not, Tim, we'll be able to. Actually, I think you're the only one that can see the hand raises right now. Let's see. I don't see any hand raises right now, but All right. again, if, so, if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to comment on the Facebook page or email one of us. Mine, mine is Tim at tintup.com. Brandon, what's yours? Mine's B C A R R O L L at heyo.com. Again, I'm the vice president of marketing here at Heyo. Uh, be more than happy to answer your all's questions. We're here for you. Uh, we sincerely appreciate your time. We hope you found a ton of value out of this webinar. And, uh, and good luck with your marketing efforts online. Remember, consistency wins. Authenticity wins as well. So keep it up. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate all your time. Thanks, and, uh... All right.